How's everybody today? Ready for the Word of God? Yeah, me too. Me too. Something about the Word of God, when you start to study it and get into it, and it's just so rich, and it's just so vibrant, and it's just so alive. And uh, what a great thing that God has given us His Word. His Word's as a double-edged sword, and it deals with situations and issues in our heart and in our life. Amen? And so is the Word of God important to read every day? Absolutely. God gives us His Word. We stand upon His Word. And on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is shifting sand. Amen? When we try to do things on our own, we stumble, we screw up, we make mistakes. Um, and obviously that's inevitable, but greater is He that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen? That's what I want to uh, share on this morning. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And I, the last time I shared, it's been a couple of months, I shared along the same line, so I'm going to be doing some reiteration and continue to move forward with this. We shared last time uh, on, uh, with the analogy was David. And David was just a young boy uh, and a shepherd, and he just got to know the Father. He spent time with the Father. He got to know who he was and learned, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And so when problems arose in David, did David ever freak out? Or <laughs> He didn't. Man, he attacked the bear. He attacked the lion that were coming after what God blessed him with. Because that's what Satan likes to do, doesn't he? He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to rob us of the blessings that God has given to us. And man, what an absolute no good for nothing. He's, he's just, he's terrible. He's rotten to the core. And God has blessed us. So when we start to question, you know, God, I need your blessing. God, I need this. Or God, where are you? We question, well, it's because Satan is lying and deceiving and manipulating. But God causes us to triumph because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. I'm now an overcomer. And so when the bear and the lion try to come and steal the blessings that God's given to us, I go after them. They don't intimidate me. How dare you try to steal and rob from whom God has already blessed? I'm blessed of God. I'm anointed of God. We are. Amen? Yes. Do you believe that this morning, church? Yes. Even when David went to go visit his brothers who were in the army, and there was the Philistines in, in Goliath, right, defying the armies of the living God. Did David freak out and say, that good luck, I'm heading back home to watch the sheep. Greater is he, rose up on the inside of him. He said, what are you doing out here hiding? What are you doing behind the rocks? What are you doing quivering in fear? He understood perfect love casts out all fear. And that love rose up on the inside of him and said, let me at him. He went to the king and said the king was going to give him all of, his, all of his, uh, uh, his armor, right? He said, this isn't for me. It's not made for me. This isn't what I'm going to do. So here Goliath, coming out with all of his garb on, which was, I mean, the Bible goes into detail about all, from this, his spear and his shield and his helmet and what he wore with his giant sword. And David came at him with a slingshot and a rock. He said, how dare you defy the armies of the living God today? Your head is mine. And David defeated him, not because of the big words that he shared, not because he was an expert slingshotist, although I'm sure he had a lot of practice, because he knew greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. And if God before us, who can successfully come against us? Though they rise up like giants and seem like insurmountable mountains, we can say to this mountain, get out of my way. I'm going forward. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And David never backed down. And we're going to get into some of that a little bit this morning. Amen? So with that, let's go ahead and bow our heads and go ahead and open up our hearts right now as we pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise you. And we thank you for this opportunity that we have to honor you. We're so grateful that you've given us your word. Your word's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Oh, God Almighty, we're just so grateful that you love us the way you love us and have empowered us for such a time as this. Father, we choose to come against any assignment, any attack, any manipulation, any deception, Lord God, that maybe has been given to us. 
And we choose to believe the report that you give, have given to us, that greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. So today I ask right now that eyes be opened and ears be opened to receive and respond to your word, to grow, Lord God, in faith in what you've called and have asked of us, that we are a church that is alive and active, growing and seeing great increase, building the army of the living God, training and making disciples of all men. So we again, we thank you for this opportunity. Holy Spirit, come, whatever you need to do, however you need to do it. We say, have your way through your word. In Jesus' mighty name, we all said, amen, amen and amen. All of us have gone through difficult times in life, have we not? Man, I tell you what, the older you get, it's like you think, oh, I can't wait until I'm older, I don't have to deal with all these problems as children. And then you realize there's a mortgage out there and there's taxes you got to deal with and insurance and all these wonderful stresses that come on the, our life. But stresses are okay. Stretching is okay. God to cause str strength to rise up within us and faith to grow within us. Amen? How many believe we need faith? It's to us time and time again. So it's okay to be stretched. God builds faith within us for His glory to be... to be built up in faith, to grow and to see it as up here starts to dwindle and we think, well, I don't need to read the Word and I'm too busy for this and it's okay if I miss church and it's okay if I, you know, I don't pray all the time, I'm just, I'm, I'm too busy. And we can ex give excuses about the busyness of life and the different things that come on, the hobbies we have. wants us to them because he who is in me will have some trouble in or oppression. It's stress and anguish. It's adversity. in Him. I'm reading the Word. Okay, God, this is the day that You've made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. You've given me this day. What do You have in store for me? And I get into the Word. Okay, Lord, even if it's the same chapter that I read every single day, maybe for weeks, I just stay in the same thing again and again and again. God, and He just continues to share with me. All right, God, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm going to read it again. And I'm going to read it again. And I'm going to read it again. Because faith comes by hearing again and again and again the Word of God. Amen? As believers, we are not exempt from tribulations, those pressures, those stresses. As a matter of fact, as soon as we give our life to Christ, it's like walking around with a t-shirt and a bullseye on us, right? Satan is coming after you because you pose a threat to his kingdom. Right? It's my job to show and share the love of Christ to everyone I come into contact with. I'm to be a light into this world. He's called us to be fishers of men. That's enticing. That This is what is Christ in me, the hope of glory. And so as soon as we give our life to Christ, whew, Satan wants to rise up, tries to instill fear, but that's when I press in the more. In those times, I know God's doing something great. Those times of pressure, I know God's doing something magnificent. And as soon as if, if I press into the Word of God, stand upon His Word, pray in the Spirit, get myself to church, get built up in my most holy faith, I know that breakthrough's right on the other side. Right on the other side, breakthrough's right there. I know that God wants to do great things in my life. I believe it. I live it. Amen? I love what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28 and 30. He says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, which is like all of us a lot of times. He just says, Come to me. Don't run from me. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Verse 30 says, For my yoke is easy, and my burden to light is, is light. Amen? That's why being filled here in his presence is so important coming to church getting built up in our most holy faith i need to build my faith up not let it wear down 
And then I start to question because deception is coming my way and manipulation is trying to come. I'm trying to uh, manipulate what the Bible says to get what I want it to say rather than, wait a second, if I'm not in faith, it doesn't matter what it says. Amen? He that comes to God must believe that he is, not my ability, and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's on me. That's on you. I can't make you. I can teach you like I'm sharing now, and I'm trusting that you're applying this to your life. I'm trusting that you're seeing God do great things in your life. That's what I'm praying and believing for the entire time I'm studying. I can see things. I can see what God's wanting to do in your life. And I just look forward to seeing the fruits of God at work in your life. Amen? Amen. Man, spending time with Jesus is so important. And it's something that you never, <laughs> you never regret. At the time, you might think, I just don't feel like it. I'm just, I'd rather do something else. I just need to veg out. I just need to go do this or go do that. But when you take the time, make the time to spend with Jesus... And whether it's 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half hour, hour, couple hours, man, that time that you give to him, you just are so, oh, I'm just so glad I did that. I'm just so glad I did that. Man, am I glad I took the time. Am I glad that I allowed him to come and fill me with his presence, his strength, his power, his peace, his joy? Because it far exceeds anything that I could ever hope or imagine. Isn't that amazing? Anything that I can even ask. God wants to exceed that. I love that. But it's so important that we just continue to do, continue to press in, continue to seek God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Because when we don't, that's when we find issues rise up. Problems, stresses, fears like to creep in, don't they? And we start to question, God, why? We're going to take a look today, just like we did last time with David, and I shared that a little bit. But I want to get into Joshua and Caleb today. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Numbers chapter 13. We're going to dissect some of chapter 13, get into chapter 14 as well. But this is where I, I want to go today. It's, it's a familiar story. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to go you, give you a little Reader's Digest version of the background of what's going on here. Because the Israelites were freed from Egypt, weren't they? Yeah, God called Moses and I need you to go talk to Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go, it's time, okay? Moses, and even that was a struggle. Mo, I can't do that, I'm a stutter. I can't talk, I can't do this, I can't. But he did it. And that wasn't without some pressure, some stresses. And God had to send plagues on the people of Egypt, didn't he? I mean, some weird stuff. Rivers to blood and frogs, locusts even to the firstborn. It got intense. This is real life. But God gave a promise. And as Israel was crying out, God heard their cry, and he delivered them. So there they are. Pharaoh says, get out of here. You're done. Go ahead. And Moses leads Israel out of Egypt. And in the midst of this leading, they come to the Red Sea. And at the time, Pharaoh changes his mind and says, Nuh-uh, I'm going to go get him. Uh-uh, isn't that like Satan to try to deceive and manipulate? Nuh-uh, nah, it ain't going to happen. And so all the people freak out. Their back's against the wall. Where are they supposed to go? They got this giant sea. It's not like the it's Lake Pasadic over here. It's a sea. What are we going to do? Oh, great, he let us out here. Now we're going to die. And they're complaining. And they're murmuring. God, what are we going to do when they're whining? Sounds like myself on occasion. And Moses cried out to God. He knew right where to go. His perspective wasn't on the situation. It was on the one that can deliver them from the situation. He knew what God had already done, and he knew his eyes were set on the goodness of God. Not any harm that was going to befall him. So he cried out to God, and he struck the Red Sea with his staff and the sea parted. And the Bible says they walked across on dry ground. It wasn't even mushy. It wasn't even mushy. They walked across on dry ground. A miracle took place. And there they walked through and when Pharaoh's army went by, the 
sea closed back up, and there they were delivered. But did that change the perspective of the Israelites? No. Rather than pressing in, man, I want to get to know this God who just sent all those plagues to deliver us. I want to know this God who when Moses struck the waters, the seas opened up and we walked across on dry land. I want to know this God. He's still the same God of signs and wonders and miracles, of healing and deliverance, of strength and of joy and of peace for your life. I want to know this God. Not religiously coming to church, getting my ears tickled and think, I'm going to make it to heaven one day. Uh-uh. God says you can have heaven right here on this earth. Right here on this earth, in His presence is fullness of joy. His presence is heaven. His presence is heaven, and we can have that. So here are the Israelites, seeing signs and wonders and miracles. This is why I say it's important that we can't get too busy. We can't shy away, back away, quit, and allow Satan to rob us of what Christ has already done for us. I want to know that God. I want to press into who He is and who He's called me to be and what He's doing in my life right now and through my life for everyone I come into contact with. So here's Israel, complaining, grumbling. What are we going to eat? We might as well go back to Egypt. We had it better there. God sends quail. God sends manna from heaven. Come on, it's raining dinner. And you're questioning... It's raining breakfast. Here we go. Let's go get it. And you just continue to complain. Continue. We have, as Christians, we have to change. And I love what Dr. Holman says because change isn't change unless there's change. I can pray a prayer, say I'm a Christian, but if there is no change, I'm only deceiving myself. If I stay in the same boat of complaining, arguing, always thinking negative, the Bible says I'm to come out of that world, be separate from that world. I'm always to look to the good, because greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. So let's take a look at numbers and see what happens here. God, here's the story. This is where the Israelites are. And I'm sure they were decent people, just complainers. They didn't press into God. So the Lord's talking to Moses and he says this. The Lord spoke to Moses, Numbers 13, saying, send men out to spy out the land of Canaan, which I'm giving to the children of Israel. And I want you to catch that right there before I go on. I want you to send out men because I'm giving you land. I'm giving you this promised land that I spoke of. Got it? That's like me giving my children Christmas presents. We wrap up all of the presents, put them under the tree, make them look beautiful. We come to Christmas morning. There they are. And what do you think the kids do? Man, they're tearing into those presents because they're a gift given to them. Am I going to take those presents away? No, you opened them up. Give them back. Our Heavenly Father is not that way either. I want you to get that God is giving them this land. It's a gift. It's a promise. He doesn't renege. He doesn't back away. There's no reason we have to question. There's times we have to work patience, and we'll get into that. But I want you to get that. I'm going to read it again. Verse 2. Send men out, God is saying to Moses, to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. I want you to get that. The 12 tribes of Israel sent out the leaders, not just random people. They were the leaders, the heads of the tribes, okay? Verse 3 says, So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord, all of the men who were heads of the children of Israel. Is leadership important? Yeah, you better believe it is. Is right leadership important? Because we're going to get into that right here, right now. Is it important to pray for our leaders? Yes, it is. Please, 
You don't understand the pressure that is on leaders. Pray for your boss. Pray for your supervisors. Pray for your pastors. Pray for the elders. Lift them up daily in prayer. Because take a look at this. Sometimes, you know, we, we see that the Lord wants us to do things that we don't know what to do or how to do it, right? God gives it, I want you to do this. Can you imagine Dr. Holman? I want you to go down south. Praise the Lord to Merrill. Oh, okay. Comes to Merrill and gives him a vision of a child care and a school, a radio station and a college and a food pantry, ministry worldwide. Dr. Holman's word from a hayseed from the UP. How am I going to do that? Instead of questioning, he pressed in to find out who his God is and what his God can do through him. And here we are today, almost 40 years later, because of what one man said, I'm pressing in to who my God is. Not question, how's this going to happen? So it's important for us to understand that God always has a reason to ask us to do something. He wants to stretch us. He wants to grow us. He wants to increase us. Amen? And that's a good thing. We might feel that pressure, but just like bodybuilders, right? When they're building muscle, their muscle has to tear in order for more muscle to grow. It doesn't always feel good. You don't always feel like doing it, but you press in because you know the end result. Amen? Let's jump down from verse 3. We're going to jump all the way to verse 17. And the reason I jumped and skipped all that part is because it's the names of all the people. And just for the sake of time, it was all the leaders, the names, the tribes that they came from. Verse 17, Then Moses sent them out to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests or there are not, be of good courage. He wanted them to be thorough in their research, in their, in their spying out the land. Amen? I mean, he went into detail. I want you to do this and be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land now the time was the season for the first ripe grapes. Verse 21 says, So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin, as far as Rahab, near the entrance of Hamath. Then they came to the valley of Eshkol, and there cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. They carried it between two of them on a pole. Now a side note, that's, that's big. It's not I'm going to the grocery store, getting myself a nice little Ziploc of, of, of grapes that I can snack on later on. They carried it between poles. It was probably the size of, you know, this right here. It was big, right? They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. The place was called the Valley of Eshkol because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. And they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. Now, I get it. It's not like they got in a car and just drove down 10, 15 minutes. It might have taken them a day or two, but 40 days, they did a thorough job. They went through, and I want you to listen to this. They did their due diligence, which we should, when we take those steps of faith. What God has asked us to do, do it with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength as to the Lord. Amen? And the things that God asks us to do sometimes take time, Right? They take time. It's not just like tomorrow, there it is. There's sometimes instant miracles, boom. And I've seen that. It's been phenomenal. But there's times where we have to take that step of faith and have patience, just like James 1.4 says, right? Let patience have its perfect work, and you'll be thoroughly and furnished entire, lacking nothing. What a promise God's given to us. Is patience a good thing? Yes. Verse 26 says, Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron, and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh, they brought back word to them, to all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land, which is sweet. That looks great. Then they told them, verse 27 says, and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. This is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong and the cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. 
The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, south, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites, they're dwelling by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. They got the people worked up because they know who those people were. And they were everywhere. They were on the banks of the sea and up in the mountains and down in the valleys. They were everywhere. But Caleb said in verse 30, I want you to grab a hold of this, then Caleb quieted the people before Moses. Obviously, they got themselves worked up. Something that they built a habit of doing. They built a habit of complaining and murmuring and questioning and fear rising up on the inside of them. They didn't press into God. They allowed emotions to run their life. And there they were thousands of years ago and the world was still turning. Constant soap opera after soap opera and drama. He said, calm down. He said, let's go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. Different perspective, right? Here are the leaders, ten of the leaders, came back and said, no, it's covered. They're everywhere. There's no place for us. He says, man, let's go take it. We're able to overcome it. See, Caleb pressed in to receive the blessing that God had given him. He knew and understand when God said, I have land that I promised you, it was his land. There's no question anymore. If God says, I'm giving it to you, is God going to take it back? Not a chance. Not a chance. God doesn't screw up. He doesn't make mistakes. He is in the blessing business. And here he is blessing And Caleb's saying, I'm choosing to grab a hold of that. I'm choosing to take what you're giving me. I'm not allowing anything or anyone, any circumstance to steal that blessing from my life. Verse 31 goes on to say, But the men who had gone up with him said, Again, these are the leaders. We're not able to go up against the people for they're stronger than we. He gave their children, the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone has, as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, those were the descendants of Anak, came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Whew. Man, church, lift your vision higher. Don't allow Satan to deceive you. Sometimes we may feel this big, but greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Greater is he that's in you than your circumstance, than your situation, than what's going on at work, than what's going on at the, in the world. Greater is he that's at work in you. Don't allow Satan to rob you of a blessing. You're blessed coming and you're blessed going. The Bible says everything you put your hands to do prospers, grows, and increases. Why would I allow Satan to deceive me, to try to manipulate me, to lie to me? I don't like being lied to. It's not fun. That's why I need to press into who God is. When I find out who my God is, I don't care what Satan tries to do. I know who my God is. And by my God, I can run through a troop. And by my God, I can leap over a wall. I don't care what giant is in my way, what mountain that seems to be enormous and insurmountable. I don't care. I know who my God is. And if God before me, who can successfully come against me? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Amen? Amen. Caleb used a confession of faith. See, faith isn't blind, church. Faith does not deny the reality of difficulty. There's those times. There's going to be difficult times. But faith declares the power of God in the face of the problem. You get behind me, Satan. How dare you defy the army of the living God? Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. The eventual actual possession of the land at a later date indicates that even though delays come, faith's confession will ultimately bring victory to the believer. Dr. Holman, 
Did all of this come right now? God gave him the vision, the word, in 1980. He didn't move here until 1986. He came here in 86, moved here, I think at least the family did. He was here for about a year, and we moved down in 87. Steps of faith, steps of faith. Let patience have its perfect work. You keep pressing into God and watch God show up. Let faith, uh, f- patience have its perfect work and you'll be thoroughly furnished and tired, lacking no good thing. It's amazing what God can do when we believe Him, when we trust Him, when we seek Him. Amen? Amen. Take a look at Numbers chapter 14. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes. So basically what's happening now, after all that took place, the people rose up like even just got crazy. Like they're calling for new leadership. Moses, you're done. We we can't follow you anymore. This is ridiculous. And Moses is falling down. No. And here Joshua and, and Caleb... They tore their clothes and spoke to all the congregation. Verse 7. And the children of Israel, they said, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. God's not giving us garbage. That's not his way. Verse 8 says, If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. He remembered what God told Moses. I'm giving you this land. It's ours. It's ours. So by faith, he claimed it. It's mine. I'm going to take it. This is what God's going to do. He will bring us into the land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Verse 9, only do not rebel against the Lord. Complain, argue, whine, allow fear to rise up, back away, press into your God. Know your God. Know the truth, and the truth sets us free from that captivity, that bondage that they were in in Egypt. God took them out physically and they still could not change their ways. We need to change our perspective. We need to see, start seeing like Joshua and Caleb, the promises that God has given to us, they're mine. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. No weapon formed against me prospers. There may be those times that I go through that are, there's some pressure there and I'm not sure why, but I'm going to press into who God says he is. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals me. He's Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides all of our need. He's Jehovah Sabaoth. He's general, leading me triumphantly into my battle. So I give it to him. All I, I honor him. I come, I give my worship to God. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are bread. Their protection has departed from them and the Lord's with us. Don't fear them. Sometimes we need those pep talks. This is why we come together in the spirit of unity and the bonding of peace because God's commanding blessings. He's opening eyes physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally to help you grow and increase. God wants greatness for your life. God's given you greatness. Let's receive it, amen? Let's go on. Verse 20 says, Then the Lord said, here we go, I've pardoned according to your word. I love that. I've pardoned. God was done. (laughs) That's it. I'm taking these people out. I can't do this anymore. And Moses pled, Nope, God, don't do it. (laughs) The Lord says, I've pardoned according to your word, your faith that you spoke out. Because of what you said, I'm going to do this because I'm a faithful God. I'm committed to you. Amen? Amen. Is it important to be committed to him and what he's called and asked us to do? I have pardoned according to your word. Verse 21 says, But truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of God. And we all said, Amen. Because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, he's reminding them, right? And have put me to the test now these ten times and have not heeded my voice. They certainly shall not see the land which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me, see it. But my servant Caleb, because he has what? 
a different spirit on the inside of him. And has followed me fully, I will bring into the land where he went, and his descendants shall inherit it. Come out from the world and be separate. See, God's put a new spirit in us to be different, to stand out from the world. And greater is he that's in us now than he that's in the world. When the world says we're going down, when the world says there is no hope, I can say he's right here on the inside of me. It is Christ in me, the hope of glory. A promise that we just seen God spoke out. Amen? Amen. I am filling my earth with my glory. That's through his people. He needs us. He desires us to be used mightily of him. This is what he wants. Amen? Amen. Is right vision important? Right perspective important? Man, is it ever. That's why it's so important that we have strong spiritual lives Strong prayer lives. Strong devotion to the Word of God. It's not just, oh, it's just prayer. It's not just prayer. I'm pressing into who my God's called me to be. I'm abiding in the vine, and I'm going to watch Him produce in my life. My strength can only get me so far. I can do all the wonderful, nice things in this earth. There's a lot of nice people. There really is. But I want to do God things. I want to do greater that he talks about. Jesus says, these signs you will do in greater. I want to press into that God. I want to see God do the impossible through my life. Not because I'm somebody great, but because it's a promise I'm choosing to take. Just like Caleb did. When Caleb says, I don't care what you see. I don't care what, even how you look at yourself. Grasshoppers, come on. We're the army of the living God. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Man, get that so ingrained on the inside of you. Get that so ingrained within you that nothing, no one, no person, no spirit, no principality, no power can rob or deceive or manipulate or lie to you and say different. Nothing can stand against us. Nothing, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. It may seem at times because we have these physical bodies, it hurts. There's pressure, there's stress, even to the point of anguish. But that should cause us to want to press in even the more. How dare you defy God, my healer. Sickness and disease is driven far from my midst. I don't care what I feel, any sniffle, any ache, any pain. I don't care what age I am. That's not the promise of God. And I'm pressing into the promises. I'm grabbing a hold of what God has for my life, not backing away, not turning down. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to look away. I'm not going to question the one who never, ever backs down on his promises. Amen? Amen. Psalms 18, verse 30. I love this. It says, As for God... His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. Man, and every one of us can say amen time and time and time again in our life. The word of the Lord is proven. He's a shield to all who trust in Him, to all who believe and look to Him as such. He's not going to be a shield if you don't believe He's a shield. He's not going to protect you if you don't believe He can protect you. But I need to believe it just like Caleb did, just like Joshua did. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. I don't care what anyone else does, what anyone else says. Something greater, the latest, greatest, whatever that they bring in. No, I don't need a circus. I need Him. I need God. I need His presence in my life. Spending time with Him has an effect on how we think. Even what we say, how we say it. Notice that both Joshua and Caleb had a good report and the other ten spies did not. I'm guessing Joshua and Caleb were pretty good friends. I'm guessing they knew and understood getting through some tough times in their life. 
They built one another up. People we hang around with are pretty important, aren't they? Our sphere of influence is pretty important. Now, obviously, we can have friends that may be sinners, that may not know Christ. But if my diet is all of that and just this on occasion, it's going to change my perspective. It's going to weaken my faith. And when giants rise up, the bear, the lion, just like they did with David, I'm going to be like those leaders. <laughs> yeah, but they're all over the place and I'm, we're not sure. We might as well just stay here. We're like grasshoppers. And we allowed Satan to deceive us. We can say, who am I, God? I'm nothing. Well, yeah. But I've also been fearfully and wonderfully made. Made with a purpose for such a time as this. I didn't ask to be here. God divinely appointed you and me to be right here, right now. You listening online, you're here for a purpose. You're listening for a purpose because of what God, the plans that God has for your life. It's good. Man, it's good. It's never evil. It's never bad. It's never mediocre. It's never halfway. But we got to grab a hold of it, just like Joshua and Caleb did. We got this. God said he's given us the land. I'm just going to go take it. You can just go walk right over there and start making camp. Here we go. God's going to do something, but I got to take a step of faith first because I know who my God is and he always comes through. Some of us think we can just wait for God to do something and we don't have to do anything. Like God's just going to supernaturally, like a genie, fix everything. God's given us the measure of faith. We have to use it. He says, you will lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Right? You will. You will pray for one another. You will build one another up. Right? We need one another. So I better be faith-filled. I better be pressed in spiritually. I better not back away and shy away because when someone comes and needs me, I need to be the leader that God's called me to be. Now, well, yeah, good luck. It's going to be a tough one. I want to be there to say, no, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. I'm telling you that today. I don't care what you're going through, the situation or circumstance you may find yourself in. God's got greatness ascribed to you. Right around the corner is your breakthrough. God's strengthening and empowering you for such a time as this. I'm asking you to abide in the vine and watch the fruit that comes forth. Watch the fruit that comes forth. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, whether you are male or female, you are here today to hear this word that God has greatness on the inside of you. Just looking to come forth. God's waiting for us to take these steps of faith and serve and seek and honor him through our words and through our actions. Amen? Amen. One more verse in Ephesians chapter 3. I love this, verses 20 and 21. It says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works where? In where? In, in everyone over here on this side? No. Oh, just over here on this side. Every one of us, according to the power that's at work in us. You might not feel it. That's okay. You might not see it. That's all right. I love that song, Waymaker. Even though I don't feel it, you're working. Even though I don't see it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop. God's working right now, right here. Oh, he's moving and he's bringing stuff up on, in our heart right now. He's bringing remembrances of promises that he's made to you. Yeah, they haven't gone away. They're still your promises from God. They're still yours. Grab a hold of them. Grab a hold of them. According to the power that works in us. Verse 21, unto him be glory. Where? In the church by Christ Jesus through all the ages world without end. Amen. It wasn't just for a time. It's not just for a season. It was for your great, great, great grandparents. It was for your parents. It's for you, for your children and your children's children's children. Greatness has been ascribed to you, church. There's power at work on the inside of you. Don't sell yourself short. Don't believe the, the lies of the enemy that say, you're somewhat small. You're inadequate. 
Those are lies of the devil. Don't believe them, not for a second. Don't give an inch to the enemy. You say to that giant, out of my way, I'm going forward. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet this morning. Today is our communion day, and I feel that it is a good opportunity. Ushers, you can go ahead and get those ready. They're going to be right on the sides here, and I'll have you come up. Once they get ready, go ahead and do that. Just starting from the front and make your way over. It doesn't really matter. But Man, communion's an important thing. Communion causes us to remember what Christ has done for us. Communion causes us to remember the promises that he's given to us. Communion causes us to remember that the power that we just read in Ephesians, that there's power at work within us. And we're to remember this each and every day. Not just when we come to church and get built up in faith. We need that too. That's why I'm here sharing this with you. Man, tomorrow when you wake up, you say, Good morning, Heavenly Father. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, King Jesus. I welcome you into my life today. Whatever you need to do and however you need to do it, I choose to receive it. And I thank you that your power is at work on the inside of me. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I might not feel like it, but your word promises it. And that's what I choose to stand on. God's in the blessing business. God's in the promise-keeping business. (laughs) Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And God loves us so much, he wants to remind us right now as we take up communion to remember that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. Physically was. I'm doing this so you remember everything that I've done for you. This is the cup of the new covenant, he says. A new covenant. Don't believe in lies. It doesn't matter. It's not in, in the greatness of your hands it's just in your commitment to his word and his promises so I want to remind every one of us today that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world and regardless of what you're going through he has greatness ascribed to you his promises they're yours don't let Satan lie to you receive them Just everyone just write out loud, repeat after me, say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you now and I say thank you for your power at work within me. Thank you for reminding me as I take communion now what Jesus did for me. The body which was broken for me, the blood that was shed for me, and the new covenant I have with you. Open my eyes to see with right perspective. Receive your goodness, your love, and your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, we all said, Amen. Let's partake. Now, I hope today was a good reminder. And maybe sometimes we go through some things, we go through some things, but to have patience. Let patience have its perfect work and you'll be thoroughly furnished, entire lacking, no good thing. Remembering each and every day, each and every night, even in the middle of the night, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Let's say that together. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Heavenly Father, I pray, pray blessings over these people these special people that you have placed here for such a time as this, a divine appointment. Lord God, I thank you that greatness has been ascribed to your people and as we abide in you, you are producing great fruit within us. Lord God, great strength rising up. You're giving us words to speak that we never thought we'd be able to. You're giving us visions, Lord God, of wonderful, wonderful promises that you've given to us. 
We choose today, Lord God, to take the steps of faith necessary to honor and to please you, to grow and see great increase for your body as you continue to build your army. We thank you for this day and all of your blessings. Great is your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray, we all said, Amen, amen and amen.